Hi there everyone, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness. Welcome, this is a place where I usually geek out about my big passion which is tropical houseplants. Um, as a new YouTube cr content creator, I do really appreciate any kind of feedback from you guys, so if you like this video do drop a like down below, it lets me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm creating and that I can create similar types of content. Also if you generally enjoy hearing and finding out a bit more about tips and tricks about what works for me, in my environment with houseplants, do consider subscribing down below as well. And I tend to try to bring out a video every every week about two or three times. So if that's something that's interested to you, do consider subscribing. But let's dive into it, shall we? So you might be able to see the plant that I want to talk about next to me. This is none other than the beautiful Monstera adansonii. I know it's one of the more common plants that you can get now in most garden centres and plant stores. There's a good reason for it. One of its common names as well is monkey mask and you might be able to see through uh, the leaves and the splits in the leaves. That is called fenestrations in a scientific term. And scientists are still debating as to why plants will have these splits or these holes in the leaves. It might be just to make sure that if it's if it's in locations where it's quite windy that the wind will go through the leaves and it won't rip up the leaves but also it could be then this is a predominant kind of theory at the moment is that as these plants grow and you get leaves that will go over the other leaves is to make sure that the light will actually filter through the holes down to the other leaves beneath it as well but definitely a, a strong grower you might be able to see i'll bring it in a bit closer this will kind of probably obscure me entirely at the moment, I don't have it on a moss pole. I do have it on support sticks and it's working quite nicely. Some of these leaves, and that's the way that you keep the leaves large, is to put it up, give it something to grow up. And if I had a moss pole, you might be able to see some of these leaves will probably be a bit bigger at the top, but they're a bit smaller because it started to hang down. As with most trailing plants, if you let the plant trail down, the leaves do have a tendency towards becoming smaller. If you give it something to climb up, like they would do in nature, the leaves will start getting bigger as they get closer towards the light. So um, overall, a really, really easy plant to care for. I did have a much, much bigger, bushier version than this nearly a year and a half ago. I lost that plant. I didn't know why. I thought it was having mosaic virus, which is something that these plants do get. Um, but I didn't know how to treat it. I tried different things, nothing was working. Ultimately, I lost the plant and you could see some of the initial signs you can see within this plant as well. It was this browning with some black dots on the actual leaf itself. I since discovered that what was causing that within this plant was the larval stages of thrips, which was such deep joy because what I hadn't realized is those thrips had turned into adults and um, spread across a lot of my plants. It took me maybe six months to get rid of the thrip infestation that I had across my other plants. So lessons learned. Um, so this one did have some thrips at the very earlier stages, but I treated it and it's growing really nicely since then. And that was also for me the what sealed the deal that yes, it was definitely thrips that killed the previous plant because the moment that I treated this for thrips, it kind of stopped the problem altogether and it kept growing. The one thing I will always say about most of my monsteros, I have them in terracotta. They like, they have got quite chunky roots, so they'd like to be quite airy. So I use my light airy aroid mix. And if you want to know how I create my mix, you can check it. It's on a video in my channel. Um, so please do go and have a look at that. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. In terms of watering with this, the only other thing I'd say is let the soil or the, the grow media dry out between waterings. This one even more so than most of my other monsteras. If it stays damp for a bit too long, it starts rotting some of the leaves quite quickly. So I will let it dry out fully before I then rewater. And yeah, fertilize every second or every third watering, even within the winter. Works really well for this plant. And in terms of light, it does appreciate bright and direct light, but not too bright. So at this particular moment in time in the UK, I've got it by a south facing window that's slightly sheltered and it's still pulled back about a meter and a half to two meters. And it's doing really, really well. So yes, it could probably appreciate a tiny bit more light, but 
giving this too much light as well could also delay its growth pattern as well because it's not used to it is an understory plant so it's used to getting more dappled light I think that's everything I wanted to say about this plant. If you've got any questions, comments, I know a lot of you might have this plant. If you've had different experiences, drop it in the comments down below. Let's have that conversation. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you have a great rest of your day and hopefully I shall see you here soon. Thanks, bye.